الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى اله واصحابه والتابعين لهم باحسان الى يوم الدين اما بعد ان شاء الله تعالى very soon the great month of ramadan is going to come our way today is the uh, 25th of the month of Sha'ban and what is left is very little inshallah ta'ala the month in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said about it in the Quran shahru ramadan alladhi unzila fihi al-Quran hudan lin-nasi wa bayyinatin min al-huda wal-furqan the month which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said about it shahru ramadan alladhi unzila fihi al-Quran the month in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he sent down the Qur'an, the Qur'an, the greatest speech. This is when it was sent down. It is the month where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to accept the forgiveness of many. He's going to raise the station of many. And there are going to be a group of people every single day. Their necks will be freed from the hellfire. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from those people. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he told us, إِذَا دَخَلَ رَمَضَانِ When the month of Ramadan enters, فُتِحَتْ أَبْوَابُ الْجَنَّةِ The doors of Jannah are opened. وَغُلِّقَتْ أَبْوَابُ جَهَنَّمِ And the doors of the hellfire are locked and closed. وَسُلْسِلَةِ الشَّيَاطِينُ And the devils are chained. Ponder and contemplate. The doors of Jannah are open. The doors of the hellfire are closed. The shayateen <clears throat> are chained. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has closed the doors of Jahannam and He's also, He has taken away from you the things that would lead you to the hellfire, which is the shayateen. All you now have to battle with is yourself and your own whims and desires. The shayateen, maradatu shayateen, are chained. Jahannam itself is chained. The door of Jannah. Another riwayah he mentions, futihat abwaabu rahma Another narration mentions, the door of mercy is opened. So it's a time where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to bestow his mercy upon his creation. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, إِذَا كَانَ أَوَّلُ لَيْلَةِ When the first night of Ramadan enters, the shayateen are chained. The tyrannical jinns are locked and chained. The doors of the hellfire are locked. There's no door of it opened. The doors of Jannah are opened. And not any of the doors of Jannah are closed. وَيُنَادَى مُنَادٍ A caller will call and he will say يَا بَاغِيَ الْخَيْرِ The one who is looking to do good, the seeker of good. أَقْبِلْ Come forward. Do the good that you want to do. وَيَا بَاغِيَ الشَّرِ The one who wants to do evil and intends to do evil now. أَقْصِرْ Stop. وَلِلَّهِ For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala every night in Ramadan in those 29 or those 30 nights, there are going to be utaqa, a people who Allah tabarak wa ta'ala will free their necks from the hellfire. Rawahu al-Imam al-Tirmidhi. Al-Imam al-Tirmidhi narrated that. Wallahi, my beloved brothers and sisters, a true believer, the one who has tasted that qata'amu al-Iman, the person who has tasted the true essence of Iman, that Iman has settled in he or her's heart, they will be so happy to meet this guest, this honorable guest, Ramadan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in the Qur'an, قُلْ بِفَضْلِ اللَّهِ وَبِرَحْمَتِهِ فَبِذَلِكَ فَلْيَفْرَحُوا هُوَ خَيْرٌ مِمَّا يَجْمَعُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, قُلْ say to them, Muhammad, بِفَضْلِ اللَّهِ be happy with the blessings and the, the virtue of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon you. وَبِرَحْمَتِهِ and be... Pleased with the mercy and Ramadan. 
is Shahrul Rahma. It is the month of Rahma. It is Shahrul Fadl. It's the month of virtue. Be happy. Show happiness. It is sad to see a group of people who claim Iman, who when Ramadan is about to come in, they become saddened. They say, oh no, Ramadan is going to come in. Are we going to have to fast that much hours? Oh no, Ramadan is going to enter and we have this coronavirus. Are we, do we really have to fast? Is there no excuse for us? Um, it's sad. Rather, it makes the believer happy. That maybe this time that we're going through this pandemic, maybe this time that we're going through these trials and these tribulations and these hardships and these calamities, maybe Ramadan coming is from the great wisdoms of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Maybe it's the only thing that's going to uplift us from this problem. That if we cry back to Allah, we humble ourselves to Allah, we fast with sincerity, that Allah wa ta'ala will bring back for us health and prosperity. This month, people are thinking about ways to make money. People are thinking about how they're going to uh, charge particular products because Muslims will buy it in Ramadan. It's needed in Ramadan. When in reality, the true believer should be thinking about how he's going to be making a lot of reward this month. How he's going to make sure that his sins are forgiven. He's going to try his hardest and exert all of his efforts in making sure that he is from the people who Allah frees his neck from the hellfire. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to give reward in this month in a way that he's never going to give it to anyone outside this month. This month, the reward that is in it is in no other month in the year. Imagine that. Ramadan has inside it reward that is not in any other time in the year. It's a month where the Prophet referred to it as Shahru Sabr, the month of patience. And patience, Allah has told us the reward for it. Allah rewards those who are patient with no restriction to the reward that they're going to get. The people who are patient, the reward that they're going to get has no restriction. It's unrestricted. حساب, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says. And to be even more specific, the Prophet sallallahu wasallam, he told us in a hadith that Kullu amal ibn Adam, every single action that the children of Adam do, يضعف, it's multiplied. It's multiplied from 10 up to 700. It's multiplied. People's rewards vary. إِلَّا الصَّوْمُ except fasting. فَإِنَّهُ لِي وَأَنَا أَجْزِي بِهِ Except fasting, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. Fasting is mine. Fasting, it doesn't take up to 700. It takes more than that. The reward is multiplied more than 700. And then there's no other action that we know that gets that type of multiplying other than Ramadan. How is it then possible that Ramadan enters and it leaves and you haven't received any reward from it? Ramadan enters and it leaves and you haven't become from the people Allah frees their neck from the hellfire. The month of Ramadan has entered and you haven't gained a high station in Jannah. It's sad that you've been given this opportunity but what you did was you forsaked it. You turned your back on it and you truly did not prepare for it. How do we prepare for this month? How do we make sure that this month we are ready? We take the best out of it. And what was the mistake that we did last year or the year before that or even the year before that that we don't want to do this year? The first thing I encourage you all is a tawbah, repentance. Tawbatun nasuha, sincere and genuine repentance. You cleanse your heart from all the sins that you've ever done. The mistakes, the faults, the wrongs. Repent from all of that. The wrong that you can do is three ways. Three mistakes you could have done before. Three sins you could have done before. The first is um, a sin that you did that is between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. That one you need to repent from it. That one you need to turn away from it. You need to regret that sin that you did. You need to run away from that sin and anything that might lead you to doing that sin. The second one is a sin that you did or a mistake or a wrong that you did to a person, a human being. You still have to ask Allah for forgiveness. You still have to regret that sin. 
you still also have to abandon that sin but you also have to ask the person who you wronged to ask them for forgiveness before Ramadan enters you speak to the person you wronged and you say forgive me for what I have said and done to you if there's anything I said to you that might have offended you in any way shape or form forgive me this is what you need to be doing in this month or this is what you need to be doing prior to Ramadan entering the reason why I say this my beloved brothers and sisters, is because if you repent and you ask Allah for forgiveness, you are fresh from everything. Your heart is clean. Your mind is clean. And you are now ready to open a new page in your life. If you still have sins that are connected to you, it's like trying to pour honey into a cup that is dirty. The taste of the honey will not be clear. You can't really taste the honey. So repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says in the Quran, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu, tawbu ila Allahi tawbatan nasuha, asa rabbukum, an yukaffir ankum sayyatikum, wa yudkhilakum jannatin tajri min tahtiha al-anhar. O oh, those of you who believe, Allah is talking to every believer, every individual who has iman in their hearts. Allah is talking to you. Tawbu ila Allahi. Repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What type of repentance? Tawbu ila Allahi tawbatan nasuha. Repent to Allah. A sincere and a genuine repentance. Asa rabbukum. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will do what for you? And you kafir ankum sayyatikum. He will expiate for you all the sins that you've done and the wrong that you have come with. Wa yudkhilakum. Allah will place you into. He will put you into. Jannatin tajri min tahtiha al-anhar. Gardens. That flow underneath it, rivers. That's where Allah is going to put you in, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So repent. Repent from all the mistakes that you have done and things that you have said and the ways that you have acted that were not in accordance to what Allah and His Messenger sanctioned. Also, my beloved brothers and sisters, what is required before I go into the second point is the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he told us in a hadith. He said, Atani Jibreel alayhi salam. Jibreel came to me. فَقَالَ he said to me, رَغِيمَ أَنْفُ رَغِيمَ أَنْفُ مَنْ ذُكِرْتُ عِنْدَهُ فَلَمْ يُصَلِّ عَلَيَّ The Prophet said, may the, may the nose of a person be dusted who I was mentioned in his, in my, I was mentioned in his presence and he didn't send salutation to me. I mean, he didn't send salutation on me. May his nose be dusted. The person who I, Nabiullah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, was mentioned to him. And that individual, he didn't say sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Then the Prophet, when, he, when Jibreel made that dua, the Prophet said, Amin. Then Jibreel said, Raghi ma'anfum ru'in, may the nose of a person be dusted. Adaraka ahada abawayhi, he meets two or one of his parents. Aw kilayhima falam yadkhulil jannah. And he doesn't get forgiveness from his parents. He doesn't use his parents as a, as a means to Jannah. Then the Prophet said, Ameen. Then Jibreel made a third dua. He said, Raghi ma'anfu, man adaraka Ramadan, falam yughfar lahu, faqultu Ameen. Also, may the nose of a person be dusted, who Ramadan enters, and they are not forgiven. They don't use Ramadan to um, enter Jannah. Also, what is needed, the second thing that I encourage you all, my beloved brothers and sisters, to do now is a niyyatul sadiqah. Come with a truthful intention. Make sure your intention is truthful. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees that your intention is truthful, He subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you what you want and He will give you the ability subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said in the Quran, إِنْ يَعْلَمِ اللَّهُ فِي قُلُوبِكُمْ خَيْرًا يُؤْتِكُمْ خَيْرًا مِمَّا أُخِذَ مِنْكُمْ وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ وَاللَّهُ غَفُورٌ رَحِيمٌ إِنْ يَعْلَمِ اللَّهُ If Allah knows from you that in your hearts there is good, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows that in your heart there is, there is good and that you intend good, يُؤْتِكُمْ خَيْرًا Allah will give you good. مِمَّا أُخِذَ Allah will give you good. From the things that were taken from you. Wa yaghfir lakum, Allah will forgive you. Wallahu ghafoorur rahim. 
Allah is one who is forgiving, one who bestows his mercy upon his creation. The ayah clearly shows to us, in Allah, if Allah knows from you that you are sincerely intending good in Ramadan, this month, every three days at least, you want to finish the Quran. You can't every seven days you're going to finish the Quran. Or if you can't, at least you're going to finish the Quran every once in Ramadan. You're going to try your best. You're also going to make sure you're going to be from the people who are going to stand at night. Man qama Ramadan imanan wa ihtisaba ghufira lahu ma taqaddama min dhanbi. You're also going to make sure silatul arham, the keeping of the ties of kinship. You're going to make sure you keep relation with family members. You're also going to give sadaqah because the Prophet sallallahu at the time he used to be the most generous was in this noble month, Shahr Ramadan, the month of Ramadan. You are intending all of this. In ya'lamillahu. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows of you in your heart, fi qulubikum khayran. If Allah knows there is good in your heart and that you intend good, yu'tikum khayran mimma ukhi that Allah will give you the khayr that you're looking for. You will get it. You will be able to finish the Quran in every three days. Because you came with a what? A niyyatul sadiqa, a truthful heart. Also Allah tabarakwa ta'ala, he says, لَقَدْ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَلِي الْمُؤْمِنِينَ إِذْ يُبَايِعُونَكَ تَحْتَ الشَّجَرَةِ فَعَلِمَ مَا فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ فَعَلِمَ مَا فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ فَأَنزَلَ السَّكِينَةَ عَلَيْهِمْ وَأَثَابَهُمْ فَتْحًا قَرِيبًا Allah says, لَقَدْ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَلِي الْمُؤْمِنِينَ Allah has forgiven the believers. إِذْ يُبَايِعُونَ At the time when they were doing the bay'ah, the pledge of allegiance. تَحْتَ الشَّجَرَ Under the tree. فَعَلِمَ مَا فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ Allah knew what was in their hearts. They had a niyyatu sadiqa. Their hearts were truthful. They were truthful in what they intended. And because of that, فَأَنزَلَ السَّكِينَ Allah, He brought about tranquility. Allah brought about peace and harmony for them. And Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, what did He do? وَأَتَى وَأَى فَأَنزَلَ السَّكِينَةَ عَلِيْ وَأَثَابَهُمْ فَتْحًا قَرِيبًا And Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, He gave them a close opening. My beloved brothers and sisters, this month is a month where we need to be making a lot of dua. Al-ikthāru min ad-du'a We're prepared and we're ready to be doing this. That's why Ramadan is the month of dua. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he used to make a lot of dua in Ramadan. But before Ramadan comes, there is something that you need to be getting yourself ready and used to saying, which is, Allahumma a'inni ala dhikrika wa shukrika wa husn ibadatik. This is the dua that you need to be making. You need to be saying, Allahumma, oh Allah, a'inni, aid me and support me, ala dhikrika in your remembrance, wa shukrika and showing you gratitude, wa husn ibadatik and perfecting your ibadah. This is the dua that you need to be making in advance. By saying, Allahumma a'inni, oh Allah help me. Because wallahi, we can't do ibadah, we can't do dua if Allah doesn't help us. That is why Allah said in the Quran, Iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'een. Oh Allah, you we worship and you we seek help from. Seeking help is part of ibadah. Why did Allah separate it in Surah Al-Fatiha? Why did he say, Iyaka na'budu, you Allah we worship, and you we seek help from. Seeking help is worshipping. Why did he separate one from the other? The reason is because ibadah can tru- cannot be truly done if it's, not, if it's not done or if Allah does not aid you and does not give you the strength to do it. If Allah doesn't give you the strength and he doesn't aid you subhanahu wa ta'ala, you will not be able in any way, shape or form to do ibadah. That is why, that's why we need to be saying right now, Allahumma a'inni ala dhikrika wa shukrika wa husn ibadatik. Walidhalika shaykh al-Islam, Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah, he said, ta'amaltu, Ibn Taymiyyah said, I pondered, I looked at what? Anfa'u dua I looked at the best dua there ever is. Fa'idha huwa su'alu Allahi al-awna ala mardati. And the best dua Ibn Taymiyyah said, I found was to ask Allah aid and support in the things that he will forgive you for. Ibn Taymiyyah is saying, I looked at all of the dua out there. I pondered over it. I contemplated over it. And I found that the best dua is 
to ask Allah to help you, to ask Allah to aid you subhanahu wa ta'ala in that which is pleasing to him. Allahu Akbar. Walidhalika Ibn Taymiyyah has a great book. He called it Kalimu Tayyib. In this book of his, it's, he wrote the dua of the Prophet sallallahu that he used to make. And now he is saying that he pondered. Also, we need to remember the ayah, وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ أُجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّاعِي إِذَا دَعَانِ فَلْيَسْتَجِيبُوا لِي وَلْيُؤْمِنُوا بِي لَعَلَّهُمْ يَرْشُدُونَ If you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for something, remember Allah is close, subhanahu wa ta'ala, is very close. أُجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّاعِي إِذَا دَعَانِ I accept the dua of the one who supplicates to me and the one who begs me. فَلْيَسْتَجِيبُوا لِي وَلْيُؤْمِنُوا بِي لَعَلَّهُمْ يَرْشُدُونَ we need to beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We need to ask from Him. The people whose dua are not rejected are the people who are fasting. The Prophet told us, alayhi salatu wa salam, Three types of people, their dua is not rejected. Three types of people, their dua is not rejected. The one who is fasting until he breaks his fast, Allah wa ta'ala does not reject his dua. So it's now that we need to be making sure that we're going to make a lot of dua. We're going to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I say to you all, فَحْرِسْ يَا عَبْدَ اللَّهِ وَيَا أَمَتَ اللَّهِ Strive, the slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The, also strive, the female slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. عَلَى اجْتِهَادِ فِي الدُّعَى In exerting all of your efforts in supplicating to Allah wa ta'ala in Ramadan. فَحَرِيٌّ بِمَنْ أَدْمَنَ قَرَعَ الْبَابَ أَنْ يُفْتَحْ لَهُ It is going to happen, the person who is consistently knocking on that door, on Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, knocking that door, and begging him to open for him the door of mercy, and the door of Jannah, that Allah will give it to you, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also, let's make sure that this month when it comes in, حِفْظُ الْجَوَارِحِ That we prepare ourselves to safeguard our limbs, safeguard our tongues, safeguard our ears, safeguard our eyesight and what we look at, all from all of the sins. Those of you who are going around and speaking about people who are gossiping, who are spreading evil on the earth regarding the believers, remember that there's going to be a severe punishment for you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يُحِبُّونَ Those who love أَن تَشِيعَ الْفَاحِشَةُ فِي الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا Those who love to spread bad and evil about the believers. Let them know. لَهُمْ عَذَابٌ أَلِيمٌ فِي الدُّنْيَا Those people are going to have a severe punishment in this world. وَالْآخِرَةُ And they're going to have a severe punishment on the day of judgment. وَاللَّهُ يَعْلَمُ وَأَنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ Allah knows whilst you don't know. Also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he said, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ فَتَنُوا الْمُؤْمِنِينَ Those who are causing fitna to the believers. وَالْمُؤْمِنَاتِ And they are causing fitna to the female believers. ثُمَّ لَمْ يَتُوبُوا And they have not repented from their wrongdoings. wrongdoings. فَلَهُمْ is for them. عَذَابٌ A punishment for them is. عَذَابُ جَهَنَّمْ For them is the punishment of Jahannam. وَمَا لَهُمْ وَلَهُمْ And for them is. عَذَابُ الْحَرِيقُ A fire that will burn them. Make sure, my beloved brothers and sisters, that you do not speak evil about the believers, that you do not do wrong to the believers. Ramadan is about fasting from your tongue as well. It is fasting from your hearing as well. It is fasting from your looking as well. It is fasting from all of your body parts. فَلَيْسَ لِلَّهِ حَاجَةً Allah doesn't have no need for you to leave off food and drinking and you're indulging in everything else. That's a person who hasn't really understood the true essence of fasting. Fasting means an yasuma an yasuma basaruk. Is that your sight also fast? Wa an yasuma samuka. And your hearing also fast. And your tongue also fast. And your heart also fast. You are fasting from every single place. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't, doesn't want a fast from a person um, who doesn't leave off wrongdoing. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said, "Man lam yad'a qawla az-zur," the person who doesn't leave off idle speech, "wal 'amala bihi wal jahla, falaysa lillahi haja fi ayyad'a ta'amahu wa sharabah." 
Rahul Bukhari. And this is what many people are doing. وَلِذَلِكَ بَعْضُ salaf, Some of the pious predecessors, the early generation, some of them, like Ibrahim and Nakha'i and others, they had the fiqh and the understanding of anyone who does sin in Ramadan, like Ghiba and Namima, that their fasting is null and voided. Ya'am, Ibrahim and Nakha'i believed if you, if you backbite somebody in Ramadan, and if you gossip about someone in Ramadan, and if you slander someone in Ramadan, and if you, if you, uh, you tell bear between people, remember that your fasting is null and void, according to him, rahimahullah. Because he said, the hadith, the evidence for me is, مَن لَمْ يَدَعْ قَوْلَ الزُّورِ وَالْعَمَلَ بِهِ وَالْجَهَلَ وَالْعَمَلَ بِهِ فَلَيْسَ لِلَّهِ حَاجَةً أَنْ يَدَعَ طَعَامَهُ وَشَرَابَهُ if you're doing قول الزور, idle speech, and you're, de- you're doing um, haram with your mouth and your ears, Allah doesn't have no need for you to leave off food. I now want to quickly mention مسائل الصيام. Quickly, some rulings and regulations in Ramadan that should be followed by every one of us. I'm going to go over it quickly, inshallah ta'ala. Point number one, the things that nullify Ramadan. The first thing that will nullify your Ramadan is al-aklu. Do not eat deliberately or do not drink deliberately. But if a person eats or drinks, but it's not deliberately, by accident you drink or eat, then man anyone who forgets, فَأَكَلَ he ate, أو شرب he drinks, فَلْيُتِمَّ سَوْمَهُ let him complete his fasting, فَإِنَّمَا أَطْعَمَهُ اللَّهُ وَسَقَى Allah is the one who is providing for you. It is Allah who gave you this food. If you forgot and you ate, or if you forgot and you drank, then inshallah ta'ala, carry on your fasting. Some of the scholars, they discussed, what about if a person has sexual intercourse and he forgot he was fasting? The wife and the husband both forgot they were fasting and they had sexual intercourse. Can it be added into the drinking and the eating. Is it the same or is it different? Some of the scholars, they said that it's different because the Prophet didn't mention that. And some of the scholars, they said, قياساً, out of analogy, it's the same. And that which seems apparent is, if the person does have sexual intercourse and he or she has forgotten, then inshallah ta'ala, let them complete their fasting. They, there is nothing upon them. The third thing that you can't do is, you can't take anything that supplements food. So in, in, insulin that is put into you, or any injection that gives you nutrition, is also going to break your fast. Al-istimna, wa wa ikhrajul mani amda. Masturbation also breaks your fast. Or if a man kisses his wife, or he fondles with his wife, and then it, he reaches... Um, ejaculation Then his fasting is broken Because he came with the means For this to happen You're not allowed to do that Number five is al-jima' Sexual intercourse is not allowed in Ramadan You cannot have it Number six It breaks your fasting as well Number six is خُرُوجُ دَمِ الْحَيْضِ nifas. If a woman reaches her postnatal bleeding or menstruation. Her fasting is null and void. Hijama breaks your fast if it weakens you. Hijama breaks your fast if it weakens you. But if hijama doesn't weaken you, you're still strong, then it doesn't break your fasting according to the strongest opinion. Number eight is ikhrajul uh, qayy amdan. Vomiting deliberately. To vomit deliberately, it breaks your fast. Also, if blood comes from your gums or it comes from your body parts, blood just comes from it, it doesn't break your fasting. It does not break your fasting. All that is needed from you if you bleed from your gum is that you take that blood out of your mouth. You shouldn't take it in. What about if you vomit but it's not deliberate? It comes out, then you can carry on your fasting. There is nothing upon you and it doesn't break your fast. Can you put perfume on whilst you're fasting? Yes, you can. It doesn't harm you. 
Can you smell Bukhur? Yes, you can as long as you do not sniff it in deeply. Are you allowed to taste food? If you are a wife or a, a, a sister who is cooking, or even the brothers, some brothers, they love to cook. They can cook if, the, if they want, inshallah. Uh, 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 they can cook, inshallah, ta'ala, if they want to. Cooking, inshallah, ta'ala, for brother or sister, are, are, they allowed to, are they allowed to taste the food? Yes, they are allowed to taste the food without swallowing it. They can taste the food without swallowing it. Okay? They are allowed to. What about if a person has a wet dream and when they wake up, they see that they have semen. For example, a man or a woman, fluid has come from her. And this is once they have woken up. And it wasn't from anything that they have done. Then this does not harm your fasting. It only harms your fasting if you did something that makes it come. For example, you kissed your wife and it made it come. Or you fondled with your wife and it, you... you reach ejaculation or you masturbated all of these will break your fasting but if you have wet dream and it wasn't because of something you did to yourself then this does not break your fasting who are the people who are excused in Ramadan they are excused in the Sharia yani they don't have to fast the people who are excused in Ramadan are two types they're two types a people who are excused but there is hope that whatever is preventing them is going gonna, is gonna to leave soon, inshallah ta'ala. The preventative factor is there temporarily. Soon is going to go, inshallah ta'ala, like a traveler. A person is not always a traveler. So whenever he's a traveler, he can break his fast. And when he's a resident, he's not allowed to. This is called a person who is ma'dur mu'akata. He is excused temporarily. A traveler. Or a person has a sickness. He wakes up in the morning and he has a very bad headache. Or he's vomiting and he's very sick. Or his temperature is very high. But this is not a, 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 a chron chronic illness. It's not a permanent illness. This person also doesn't have to fast for those days which they are sick. Based on the ayah, فَمَنْ كَانَ مِنْكُمْ مَرِيضًا أَوْ عَلَى سَفَرٍ فَعِدَّةٌ مِنْ أَيَّامٍ أُخَرٍ These people, they have, to, they have to bring it back. Another example for that is a woman who's on her menstruation. Or a woman who's on a postnatal bleeding. Or a woman who is on, uh, she's breastfeeding or she's pregnant. Now I want to mention a powerful point regarding mothers who are breastfeeding. Or mothers who are pregnant. If a mother is pregnant and she's breast or she's breastfeeding. If she doesn't fast, if she doesn't fast for the child. It's because of the child she broke the fast then she has to bring back the fasting and she has to also do kafara. Okay? She can break her fast, no problem. She has to bring back that fasting and she also has to do a kafara. Okay? What about a woman who is breaking her fast because of her own health? She can't, it's because of her, the, the, she can't carry the baby, she's becoming weak. Or she's breaking her fast because... She, she is unable to breastfeed a child and fast. It's physically weakening her. Then she's like the sick person. She just has to bring that back. She just has to bring back that fasting after Ramadan. There is no feeding that she needs to do. Ponder on that. Um, the second people who are excused are the people whose sickness is chronic. It's gonna be it's a permanent sickness. These people are like the elderly man and the elderly woman. They're very sick. They fall under the ayah, It's an elderly mother, a grandmother and a grandfather. They're very old. Or they have a sickness which is chronic. These people are excused. They don't have to bring back that fasting. They don't have to. They just have to feed uh, every day a miskin. Every single day. Um, what, what about if a person is a traveler? He's a traveler and he's got the ability to fast. I can fast. I'm There's nothing. It's easy for me to fast. Can I break my fast? Yes, you can. You're a traveler. You can 
fast. You have the ability to fast. You have the rights to whether if you want to break it or if you want to fast, it's up to you. Allah has given you udhr, shara'i. Okay? You can break your fast. It's your choice. You have the choice to fast. Which one is best lacking? That which is best is what is easiest for the person. If the person has the ability and there's no, he's got the strength for it, it is better for him to fast. It is better for him to fast. And if he's weak and it's going to make him tired, then it's better for him not to fast. It is better for him not to uh, fast. Um, those are the most important things that I wanted to mention, inshallah ta'ala. Anything which I have said that was wrong or incorrect is from me, as shaytan. And Allah and his messenger are free from it. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayh.